Joining us now are six members of the jury, Joel Zemke, Michael Cardona, Diane Keim, Jennifer Turner, Herbert Graham, and Paula Calzetta. Good morning to all of you. Thanks for being here. Morning. I know that you were pooled yesterday to make sure that your decision was unanimous. So let me start by asking each one of you now, are you 100% certain that Stephen Hayes should die by lethal ejection? Let's start with you, Jennifer. Yes. I mean, we... Yes. 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 The fact that you took four days to reach that decision and the sort of questions that you were asking led some people to believe that maybe you were divided in your decision or leaning against the death penalty. Was that ever the case, Michael? Um, I think everybody went in with their own thoughts and their own ideas, and we all wanted to hear the evidence and we wanted to weigh everything properly. Uh, we definitely took our time. We wanted to make sure that we followed the laws of the state of Connecticut and, and we followed the instructions that the judge gave us. So we, we took our time and we did it. At one point in uh, his closing, the defense attorney said, look at him. He is not a rabid animal. He is a human being. Paula, what do you see when you look at Stephen Hayes? A vacant man, a shell. It, and it, that, was, that was pervasive from the beginning. I kept looking to see if there some form of life within. It's just a constant shell. So it's... It was hard to see, to, to get a read on him, really. I have no involvement in this case other than reporting it, and yet I find myself sometimes so affected by it, I can't get it out of my head. You are in it, having to look at these photographs day after day of these girls that were burned while tied to their beds, having to sit face to face from Dr. Pettit. How do you keep it, Diane, from consuming you? I think that was a challenge for all of us. Um, to keep our emotions in check the best we could. Uh, we were given the task to work within, work in concert with the law. And in doing that, that's why it had taken us uh, four days to make the decisions and reach a consensus, because that was a battle within all of us. We had a man's life. You know, he, he was, his, we were looking at his life, we were looking at should we give him death, and it was difficult for all of us, and it took courage for us to reach a consensus. I agree. Herb, I'll give you the last word. Your impressions of the case and your wish for Dr. Pettit. Well, uh, at the end, um, and a lot of people don't realize this, at the very end we did, as a jury, ask the judge if we could see Dr. Pettit, and they made arrangements for us to meet with him in the basement of the courthouse. And probably uh, that was one of the most touching moments to actually shake his hand and um, feel with him uh, a feeling of having come to a conclusion or come to a, uh, a sensible end to this, uh, this horrible thing that he went through. Uh, there's no question the man has strength. Oh. Uh, if any one of us could follow this yes. man's strength, Absolutely. you would have walked a good road. And his whole family came. And having lived through this for however many weeks, We've come to feel like we know the girls and, and know the family. And, and his mom, especially for me, it was very, the, the grandparents were very, yeah. it, it, that was very touching for me to see them there day after day. Yeah. He thanked us. And that was, he thanked us. It, it kind of threw us back. Mm -hmm. Why are you thanking us? You know, that we just, we followed yeah. the letter of the law, what the state of Connecticut told us to do, and we did it. Mm -hmm. Well, you did a real service, and, and we thank you. I know it wasn't easy. Thank you very much for that and for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.